In the days before Mary was to give birth, she and Joseph were forced to go to Bethlehem to be counted for the census. They had no choice in this matter. The late stages of Mary's pregnancy and the difficult journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem did not matter to the political leadership of the day. Mary and Joseph had to leave the comfort of their home in Nazareth, knowing that they had few resources to find good accommodation when they arrived in Bethlehem. We all know the result. The only place Joseph could find for his wife to have her baby was in a stable with a manger for the baby's first cot. Their displacement from home did not end with the baby's birth. We learn that King Herod wanted to find the baby and kill him, thus eliminating any threat to his throne. Joseph was warned in a dream to go to Egypt for the safety of his family. Once again, a political decision resulted in a family being driven from their home and being forced to go to a foreign land for safety. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus had become refugees. In this narrative, Matthew's Gospel makes a link between Mary and a woman from the Old Testament, Rachel, the second wife of Jacob, and the mother of two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. There are several layers to this connection. Rachel had difficulty conceiving children and in giving birth. In fact, Rachel died in childbirth when Benjamin was born. The prophet Jeremiah, who lived years after the time of Rachel, speaking about the coming exile of the Israelites from their land and their flights into Babylon and Egypt, says, a voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. However, as this quotation continues in Jeremiah, God consoled the about to be exiled people with the words, keep your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for there is a reward for your work. There is hope for your future. Your children shall come back to their country. In that same chapter of Jeremiah, God promises, the days are surely coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Now, Matthew takes these verses from Jeremiah and attaches them to the story of the flight of the refugee family into Egypt and the death of the firstborn infant boys. Intertwined are the women giving birth in challenging situations, the displacements from home, the forced leaving to go to a foreign land, the promise that God is still with them, and the trust that God will make a new covenant. The woman Rachel and the woman Mary are giving birth to sons and peoples, and they are doing so under the most challenging of circumstances. Many years later, Mary will again be faced by an unjust political system as her son is crucified on the cross without any legitimate reason. How wrong we would be to conclude that these linked narratives have nothing to do with today's world. In fact, the displacement of peoples is one of the greatest challenges facing us in Canada and in countries worldwide. Homelessness and affordable housing are significant political issues in every province and territory in Canada. Young people starting out without any employment, women abused by their husbands, elderly people who can no longer pay taxes on their homes, all know what it is like to be forced from your home. Today, in the Horn of Africa, millions of women, men and children are facing starvation and death because of unjust political systems. Major civil movements like the Arab Spring and the Occupy Wall Street demonstrations are signaling the unrest caused by the conjunction of unjust regimes, multinational greed, and the displacement of persons. What can we learn from the displacements of Mary's family to help us today? The Ecumenical Association of Third World Theologians gives us the answer when it defines spirituality in our time this way. Spirituality is the name we give to that which gives us the strength to go on, for it is the assurance 
that God is in the struggle. Mary's experience is the experience of so many displaced people today. Let our response echo her response, trusting in our God and working to respond to the cries of the poor.